I'm sure we all remember those days back when we were in school and our teachers told us never ever to judge a book by its cover. But if you're a comic book fan, you know that that rule certainly does not apply. The comic book cover is arguably the most important part of a comic book. It's what really captures the reader's eye and makes them really, really want to see what is inside that comic book. A story is super, super important in a comic book. We all know this. But a good comic book cover sometimes could compensate even for a bad story. So today, comic book aficionados, we are talking about the absolute all-time best comic book covers. Hey comic book fans, this is Dante D and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. If you're new here today, please consider hitting that subscribe button. So the absolute best comic book covers of all time. In order to have made this list today, comic books had to have an outstanding cover that was really famous. Some of the comics that are going to appear on this list today, I actually do have and I'll be showing you my personal copies of these comics. Others I don't have and I'll just be putting up kind of a stock image and talking about it. Now I would like to think that this is a complete list. If you feel that there are other comics that I missed on this list, please, please, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I absolutely love starting discussions on these types of things. So the books that you're going to see are going to appear in no particular order. Okay, here we go. First up we have the New Mutants number 87. This cover here is most famous for being on the comic book that featured the first appearance of Cable. Uh, this is Rob Liefeld artwork. I, I absolutely love this cover. It's, it's really, really great. Whether you love Rob Liefeld or you hate him, I really think um, everyone can kind of appreciate this cover. The Incredible Hulk, number 340. This is Todd McFarlane artwork. This is another uh, very famous cover from the 1980s. Uh, and I don't think there's anything else um, hugely significant about this issue other than the cover. The Incredible Hulk, number 377. This is an absolutely stunning cover. It is just so simple. I just love the use of color here. It's by a um, little bit of a lesser known artist. I mean, he did make a name for himself, but it's by uh, Dale Keown. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. It's K-E-O-W-N, Keown. <laughs> Superman 75, the famous or infamous, depending on your point of view, uh, Death of Superman issue. This is cover art by Dan Jurgens and Brett Breeding. Green Lantern Green Arrow number 85. This is from the legendary run on Green Lantern Green Arrow by uh, Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. This is one of my personal favorite covers. Uh, it features um, Green Lantern's Ward Speedy. Um, shooting up heroin. Uh, this was a very, very controversial issue in the 1970s. This is when DC tried to tackle the issue of drugs in their comics. Detective Comics number 31. This is probably one of the most famous and one of the most classic covers um, on this list here. This is cover artwork by Bob Kane. Batman number 227. This probably looks very familiar to you um, as it is a homage cover to Detective Comics. Uh, number 31. This is a Neil Adams cover. This cover, although it is a homage, is uh, a classic in its own right. New Mutants number 98. I don't think this book needs any introduction. Uh, this issue here features the first appearance of Deadpool, which is why this cover is so, so famous. And uh, this is Rob Liefeld artwork. Great cover. Again, whether you like Liefeld or you don't, I, I think we all can appreciate this cover. This is one of the most hyped about books right now. Detective Comics number 27. Think fast. Is this an original or not? Uh, I'm sure most of you who guessed this wasn't an original guessed it because I'm not rich. No, I'll give you guys more credit than that. This is a 1984 reprint of uh, Detective Comics. It's the um, the Oreo cookie giveaway, I guess. Um, if you sent in proof of purchases off of your Oreo cookie packages back in the mid 80s, um, if you sent enough, they would send you this free copy of Detective Comics 27. And this famous cover here uh, features artwork by the one and only Bob Kane. I will never be able to own an original Detective 27, so I guess this is the next best thing. Avengers number four, another very, very well-known comic book cover. This cover is very famous for being 
uh, on the comic book that features the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. This is uh, cover art by Jack Kirby. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number four. There's nothing really significant about this particular issue. This comic book here is a standalone because it is famous for its cover. This is Jim Steranko artwork, Avengers number 57. This is one of the most famous Silver Age covers. There have been so many swipes of this cover and so many homage covers. The cover art for this issue was provided by John Buscema and uh, this comic book also contains the first Silver Age appearance of The Vision. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number seven. Here's another very famous cover by Jim Steranko. Again, nothing too, too significant about this issue here. This one here is famous solely for its cover. Really, really jaw-dropping artwork. You have a little bit of surrealism here. You got the clocks here, which are very, very reminiscent of the uh, melting clocks uh, painting by Salvador Dali. The Fantastic Four, number one, cover art by Jack Kirby. This is just such an amazing um, comic book cover. It's one of the most memorable of the Silver Age for sure. Next up we have Daredevil number 181. This is the famous Death of Elektra issue. That's what makes this cover very, very uh, famous. This is work by Frank Miller and again you can never go wrong with Frank Miller. Next up is a very, very famous cover uh, and a very, very rare comic book. This is the Incredible Hulk number one. Another very famous Silver Age cover here by Jack Kirby. We have here Spawn number one. This cover here really does not need any introduction. It is work by Todd McFarlane, one of the hottest artists from the 1980s and 90s, and this is one of the hottest books from the 1990s. Uh, it sold up to a million copies. This was just a really, really hot book, and this cover here is just jaw-dropping. Todd McFarlane is really known for producing a lot of great, great covers throughout his career. Iron Man number 128. This is a famous cover by Bob Layton. Um, great cover from the 1980s here, and it is in the famous um, Iron Man quote-unquote drunk issue. Uh, the story's Demon in a Bottle. This is the issue where uh, we learn about Iron Man's alcohol problems. Silver Surfer number one. This is another one of my personal favorite covers. I absolutely love this cover. This is work by John Buscema from 1968. This is an issue that is very famous for being the first Silver Surfer solo series, but this issue here is also very famous for this cover here. This is a very, very well-known cover in the comic book collecting hobby, and it's just great. Captain America 100 great cover here by Jack Kirby and Sid Shores. This is the um, issue of Captain America that resumes the original numbering of um, Captain America and is also the um, first issue of Captain America in the Silver Age. Batman number 497. This cover here has gone down in history. This is not a very expensive book. You can probably add this book to your collection for under 10 bucks if you're lucky probably even under five, but this cover is just ingrained in pop cultural history forever. Bane, the villain that became popular almost in an instant, known villain known for breaking Batman's back, uh, just an awesome, awesome cover from the uh, 1990s. And this artwork here uh, was by Kelly Jones and uh, Bob LaRose. Uh, Jim Aparo actually did the artwork inside, but the cover is actually done by Kelly Jones. I just thought I would note here with this comic book here, um, this is the die cut cover edition of uh, the Breaking of the Bat issue, but there also is a, a newsstand edition that exists out there, which um, isn't a die cut. So this like black and white part wouldn't be here and it would be just the uh, image of Bane breaking Batman's back. Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76. This is another Neil Adams cover. Uh, amazing, amazing cover here. This book here is actually famous because of its cover. There's nothing hugely significant about this issue other than it is the start of the um, famous run on uh, Green Lantern and Green Arrow by uh, Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. Giant Size X-Men number one, another book that likely does not need any introduction. This is one of the huge um, key issues from the uh, Bronze Age. And this here is just um, a really, really famous cover. Again, this cover has probably been swiped many, many times. This book 
here is most famous, I mean, not only for its cover, but also because it features the uh, first appearance of a lot of uh, famous X-Men uh, characters like Storm and, and Nightcrawler and uh, just to name a few. I think this is the first appearance of Wolverine on the, on, on the team, on the X-Men team. Superman number 199. This is a cover done by Carmine Infantino. Um, this is a very, very famous cover from the Silver Age. Uh, it depicts the uh, first Flash vs. Superman race. Um, this cover is very, very well known. I've actually seen this one on t-shirts. The Incredible Hulk number 181, a book and a cover that needs absolutely no introduction. This cover here was made famous because it is on the comic book that features the first full appearance of Wolverine, the wildly popular Wolverine. This, uh, this cover art here is by Herb Trimp. I'm not sure how to say that. I don't know if it's Herb Trimpa, Herb Trimpy, or Herb Trimp. Multiple choice. Let me know if you know how to say it properly. But uh, again, this this cover here has been swiped so many times. Um, I know the. Uh, I think they did redid this cover um, on the um, the Jason Aaron run on the Incredible Hulk back in 2011. I know they they uh, they swiped it. Um, it's just again, this is another one of those covers that will never be forgotten and is just ingrained in pop cultural history. This is Tales of Suspense 39, and as we all know, is the first appearance of Iron Man. This, that's probably why this cover is so famous, because it is the first issue that has um, the first appearance of Iron Man. This is a Jack Kirby cover, and uh, what a marvelous cover it is. Batman number 428, one of the great covers and great comics from the late 1980s. This is the famous issue which features the death of Robin. This cover here is just so compelling. When you look at it, you really don't even have to guess about the tone of this book. It's just such such an eye-catching cover. The cover art in this particular issue here was done by Jim Aparo, the great Jim Aparo. Next up is Detective Comics number 38. This is cover art by Bob Kane and Jerry Robinson. Um, this cover here is famous for being uh, on the comic book that has the first appearance of Robin the Boy Wonder. The Infinity Gauntlet, number one, super famous cover here, uh, will never be forgotten. This is one of the great covers from the 1990s. This issue here is the first issue in the uh, Infinity Gauntlet limited series. It is one of the most memorable covers from the 1990s and also one of the most memorable stories from the 1990s. I absolutely love, love this cover and I love this story. The cover art for this book was done by George Perez. Journey into Mystery number 83, another book here that does not need any introduction. This is the first appearance of Thor with such a great cover here. I absolutely love this cover here. Wish I had this book. Um, this is a cover by Jack Kirby and so, so memorable. Secret Wars number one. Great, great cover here, featuring a lot of the major characters from the Marvel Universe. Uh, this this cover has been swiped a few times. There were a couple homage covers I've seen um, of this of this particular issue here. I know uh, Marvel Zombies kind of parodies this cover a little bit. Um, Again, this is just, you can't go wrong with this cover. It's so eye-catching, it's so great, and it comes from one of the most memorable stories uh, coming out of the 1980s. We have <laughs> Secret Wars number eight. Um, all the Secret Wars um, covers, if my memory serves me correctly, were um, done by Mike Zek. This cover here was made most famous because it's in the comic book that features the origin of the symbiote that gives... Um, Spider-Man, that uh, that black costume, which eventually becomes Venom. The famous showcase number four with cover art by Carmine Infantino. Um, this is such a famous book in more ways than one. Famous for its cover, but also famous for being um, the first Silver Age appearance of The Flash. This book here is also considered to be the book that ended the Golden Age and began the Silver Age of comics. 
Man Thing number one. This is another personal favorite cover of mine. I absolutely love the um, the Man Thing series. It is just such a great story, and it provides some really jaw dropping art. This is an example. Um, this this cover here is probably one, in my opinion, one of the great covers of um, of the 1970s. And uh, if you read a lot of blogs about uh, famous covers, this this will appear inconsistently. It doesn't appear on every list, but it, you, you do see it on, on, on some. Um, I, I needed to include this just because I, I just think it's, it's a great cover. And um, this cover here was done by Frank Brunner. Here we have showcase number 22, another famous cover uh, and mostly famous because it contains the first Silver Age appearance of the Green Lantern and the first appearance of Green Lantern's new costume. Uh, this cover art here was done by Gil Kane. And here we are again with the Jim Lee X-Men number one. I cannot tell you how many times this particular book here has appeared in my videos. Um, it's like in so many of my videos. Um, this book was just so hugely significant in, in pop culture, in comics, and it's just a hugely significant book. This is one of the great covers. Um, of all time, and one of the great covers from the 1990s. This is artwork done by Jim Lee. Jim Lee, again, another one of the um, hot artists from the 80s and 90s. Now, this is just one cover that he did. Um, there are uh, variant covers uh, for this particular issue here that if you put them all together, they kind of paint a scene. Uh, but all, all the covers are great. This book here holds the record for the most copies sold of an individual issue of a comic book ever. Uh, this particular comic here estimated to have sold around 8 million copies. And here we have another wildly famous cover. This is All American Comics number 16. Most of us know that this is the first appearance of the Green Lantern ever. And uh, the cover art here was done by Sheldon Moldoff. Wolverine volume 2 number 10. This is a, a lesser known uh, famous cover, but it is a famous cover nevertheless, features um, Wolverine and Sabretooth on the cover. This is just a very famous rivalry. Um, if you look in the CGC and uh, in the uh, comic books price guide, uh, the stated significance of this book it is the first Wolverine versus Sabretooth in the um, main Wolverine series. I know it's getting really um, specific. The cover art for this book here was done by Bill Sienkiewicz. Sorry if I butchered that name. Crime Suspense Stories number 22. Wow, what a hot cover this one is here. This is probably one of the most controversial covers of all time. This is one of the covers that is considered responsible for starting the whole um, witch hunt against comic books and the crusade against comic books um, that was started by uh, Frederick Wortham. Wolverine, volume one, number one. This is a super famous cover from the 1980s. Immediately recognizable. Everybody, when they see this, knows that this is the first Wolverine solo series that was limited. Uh, I believe it was four issues. And this cover art here was done by Frank Miller. Just jaw-dropping artwork. I absolutely love this cover here. And I think the, the way Wolverine is uh, depicted here is really, really representative of the type of character he is. Just that bad boy, badass character that we all know and love. Alpha Flight number 106. This is cover art done by Rob Liefeld. This is a famous cover that depicts North Star, but this issue is also famous uh, for being the issue in which North Star comes out as being gay, and I believe that North Star was the first openly gay superhero ever. Spider Man number one. This is an immediately recognizable cover, just a jaw dropping cover. I absolutely love this cover and this comic book. Um, the artwork, of course, was done by Todd McFarlane. Next, we have probably my favorite Superman cover of all time, and unfortunately, I don't have this one in my collection. I've been looking for it for a long time. This is um, Superman number 233. This book here is just famous for containing a classic cover by Neil Adams, and it is just such a great cover. I absolutely love it, and I really hope to be able to add this one to my collection one day. Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven. Another cover that is just ingrained in pop culture. I absolutely love this cover. This issue here is um, famous for featuring the uh, death 
of uh, Supergirl, uh, but this cover is just significant in so many more ways than just that. A lot of people see this book as the end of the Bronze Age of Comics and the beginning of the Modern Age or the Copper Age of Comics and that shift to much darker stories. Crisis on Infinite Earths number eight, uh, another legendary cover that came out of the Crisis on Infinite Earths run. This cover here and Crisis number seven were both done by uh, George Perez and um, this issue here, this cover is famous for being in the comic book that features the uh, death of the Barry Allen Flash. Captain America Comics number one cover art done by Jack Kirby and this is a cover that is famous for depicting Captain America in his very first appearance but it is also so famous for showing Captain America punching out Adolf Hitler. The Uncanny X-Men number 141. Uh, this is one of the great covers of the 1980s. I've seen t-shirts um, in stores that feature um, this cover on them. This cover here was done by John Byrne and this issue here is the first issue in the uh, Days of Future Past storyline which is a two issue run. Wiz Comics number one with cover art done by C.C. Beck. This is a famous cover that is reminiscent of uh, Superman's first appearance on in Action Comics number one um, where he is smashing a car and here we have um, Captain Marvel um, throwing a car so but this cover here is famous for depicting Captain Marvel in his very, very first appearance. Uncanny X-Men number 137. This is another cover by John Byrne. And this cover is famous for being in the comic book that features the uh, death of the Phoenix. Silver Surfer number four with cover art done by John Buscema. Uh, this is a classic cover depicting a battle between Silver Surfer and Thor. This is Action Comics number one. Of course, this is not an original Action Comics number one. I will never ever be able to afford an original Action Comics number one. This is a uh, reprint. Uh, from the uh, 50th anniversary of Superman in 1988. And uh, this cover here, again, needs no introduction. Even people who don't read comic books arguably will know what the um, cover of the first appearance of Superman looks like. It's just, it's all, it's everywhere. It's in the news. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's in magazines. Like you, you, it's impossible to get away from this image. Um, everybody knows this cover and it is the most, probably the most significant cover of all time because it features the first appearance of the very first superhero ever. And this, this guy here is who started the superhero craze. And you can argue that every single superhero that has ever been created in one way or another has similarities with this guy here. Detective Comics number 475 with cover art done by Marshall Rogers and Terry Austin. This is a classic Joker cover. Amazing Spider-Man annual number 21. Very famous cover that features the wedding of Peter Parker. Anyone growing up in the 1980s will remember this, this cover. This cover here was done by John Romita. The Amazing Spider-Man number 129. This is a Gil Kane and John Romita cover. Of course, we all know this is the first appearance of the Punisher. Um, this cover has been swiped so many times and I've seen so many homage covers for this. It's a great, great cover. It's The Amazing Spider-Man, number 300. Book needs no introduction. This cover here is most famous for being on the comic, which features the first full appearance of Venom. This is Todd McFarlane cover art, another uh, Todd McFarlane book. And I cannot tell you how many cover swipes there have been of this book and how many homage covers that I've seen. Um, just a hugely, hugely significant um, cover. The Amazing Spider-Man number 252. This is a famous cover from the 1980s. Um, this is a homage to Amazing Fantasy uh, 15. This cover art here was done by Ron Friends and uh, Klaus Janssen, or Jansen, uh, depending on your pronunciation. Amazing Spider-Man number 33. This is a Steve Ditko cover. Amazing, amazing cover. I absolutely, this is one of my personal favorites. This is a very, very well-known uh, cover from um, from the legendary run on uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, which featured Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. The Amazing Spider-Man, number 50. Please excuse the uh, top portion that's m missing there. I got this book stupidly cheap, um, and I never upgraded it because I'm, frankly, I'm actually really just happy with this copy here, but um, 
This is another cover that is literally one of the most famous covers of all time. It's a great, great cover. Very, very compelling. Um, really kind of evokes a lot of emotions. This cover is famous for being on the comic book, which features the first appearance of the Kingpin. And this artwork was done by John Romita Sr. Just a great cover. I absolutely love it. Batman number 251. This is a super famous cover that was done by Neil Adams, which features the uh, Joker. Um, other than this being a classic cover, there's nothing really too significant about this book if my memory serves me correctly. This book here is significant because of this cover. This is a standalone book that is significant because of the cover and not because of a first appearance. I absolutely love this cover. And last but definitely not least, we have House of Secrets number 92 with cover art done by Bernie Wrightson. And what a famous cover this is. This is famous for depicting the first appearance of the Swamp Thing. This is one of those huge heavy hitter Silver Age keys. That about does it for our list here. Once again, if you feel that there are other covers that should have been on this list but weren't, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me here today. I really hope you enjoyed this list. Please, before you go, once again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. Ciao!